Hey everyone, don't forget to stay tuned till after the video if you want to find out how to support me or where to follow me on social media. And also, if you like this video and like what I do, like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. Anyways, thank you so much for choosing me, and on with the video. Lunchables will soon become a part of school lunch programs as the USDA is pushing for healthier lunches. I don't eat it. It's like, it's raw. That shit is raw. Cafeteria food has always been the butt of jokes, but this isn't funny. Students disgusted by what they're being served are taking their beef online. Look at this. This is the main meal. We cut into our food and it was all pink. The orange was cut into and it was moldy and black and gross. New recommendations to treat childhood obesity now include weight loss pills and surgery. That's according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, which updated its guidelines for the first time in 15 years. So, have you guys been paying attention to what they're doing to the kids? Because a lot, a lot has been happening about school kids and young kids and their diet and their weight loss and their sugar consumption and their salt consumption and you know whenever i was researching this and two other youtubers uh uh did it in uh, one of them is obviously the the lovely talented and thorough kiana uh kiana doherty and then it was let me make sure i get his name right it is Evan Edinger. Edinger? Edinger? We're going to go with Edinger. They brought up other things that I wasn't aware of. So, for instance, Kiana Love has informed us about how Kraft Heinz has literally brokered a deal with U.S. American schools to provide the lunches across the nation. Are you ready for what they're going to be? Souped up Lunchables. Starting this year, school administrators will be able to buy two different Lunchables offerings for the 2023-2024 school year turkey and cheddar cracker stacker and extra cheesy pizza. Much like the name suggests, the turkey and cheddar lunchables include slices of turkey and cheddar with crackers, and the pizza option includes a craft cheese blend, pizza sauce, and crests. So I personally didn't have lunchables growing up, but I knew about them and I wanted them. So I went and tried to buy the two lunchables they were talking about for this video, but I found out Canada no longer has lunchables. We just have lunch meat. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm sorry. This is the best I could do as a Canadian. But according to the ingredients and everything I read online, these are virtually identical in every way that will work enough for this, for these purposes. So I bought the turkey and cheddar one and the pizza one. The round ham slices that come in Lunchables is probably the best tasting ham I've had. They're so juicy and taste dope. You know why? Cause it's not normal ham. You know what the funny thing is? Opening these things up, they look incredibly unappetizing. Immediately, the smell is so strong that fake meat flavor is like hits you in the face. And the first bite is like the fakest thing you've ever tasted in your entire life. But then another bite and another bite and suddenly they're kind of good and you want to keep eating them. And the reason Lunchables taste kind of good is also the reason they're pretty bad. They're pumped full of stuff to make low quality ingredients, tasty, palatable dopamine ticklers. I don't even buy Kraft cheese of any kind. I don't even use their American cheese. I find it to be disgusting. Uh, the only American cheese I will have is the White Land Lakes. Okay, let's start with that. I don't even like using their shredded cheese because their shredded cheeses always have a little something in them that shouldn't be there. It just it doesn't melt right, doesn't taste right. I don't use it. 
So when I found out that they were giving these kids now whenever you the kids get free lunches they're getting these souped up sodium filled highly processed highly addictive low in nutrition luckily the fda is not involved in this decision as no corporation paid them enough to care about children's health but if you're unaware of this even though the u.s does have a food and drug administration they don't deal with this sort of thing at all in fact it's another department the u.s department of agriculture that sets new rules and standards for nutrition including for school meals according to the cdc 73.6 percent of americans aged 20 and above are overweight or obese that is a startling figure so the usda stepped up to the plate and proposed some new square attrition standards or new nutrition standards for school meals, which included for the first time ever in the known world of America, a limit on the added sugars allowed in food and drink. Now the new sugar limits wouldn't go into practice until the 2025, 2026 school year, which gives school districts more than enough time to, what, do you think here I was gonna say, implement these strategies to better the health of their students? No, probably just to find a loophole to avoid having to do it at all, which is kind of what we do in America. I mean, we classed pizza as a vegetable, so we didn't have to follow the guidelines last time. We'll probably do it again. But pizza isn't in the crosshairs of the USDA's proposed rules. It's in fact all the added sugars to things such as yogurts and milks. Now, uh, Lunchables. They claim they're going to be adding more nutrition to them. They're going to make them a larger size. Because I'm sorry, a Lunchable is, as Kiana said it, it's not an appropriate meal for a child. I never have had Lunchables my entire life. I hate them. I won't even touch the package. I get physically ill just touching the package. Opening up them, so like... I get these meat rolls for my dogs, right? I, I'm sorry to diss anyone that eats Lunchables. I get these meat rolls for my dogs that are chicken, um, and they're my fresh pet. And when I open it up, the smell of the meat and everything kind of grosses me out. Lunchables smell like that. Um, the pizza one. Smells like Play-Doh. You open it up and that aroma hits you. This odd, plasticky, but salty scent. That's a Play-Doh smell. Next time you get a chance, open up a jug of Play-Doh. Take a whiff. And then open up the pizza Lunchables. And then you'll be like, holy shit. Now, these things are designed to make kids addicted to them. They literally pump them full of juices and fake flavorings and sodium. It used to be slime, literally the infamous pink slime. And then, cause this I found out after I watched this video by Evan. Now you might be thinking, Evan, is it just sugar they're gonna be limiting? Nah, sodium as well. How many times do I make that joke? <laughs> And though you might view the humble turkey and cheese sandwich as one of the healthier options available in a U.S. school lunch, it has 1,500 milligrams of sodium in it. And the new goal is proposing that the meals have to average out at 1,000 milligrams per serving for the whole meal. And that's going to be a struggle for a lot of school cooks. I can definitely see some chefs getting pretty salty about that through osmosis, I guess. If we know what we know about high levels of sugar and salt and their increasing risk chance of obesity and diabetes and other conditions, why would we be funding schools to systemically make it easier for our children to have these conditions? It doesn't make sense. But can you guess who's upset about these proposed changes? You don't have to think too hard. The villains of today's society don't just hide in the shadows. They shout their opinions from the rooftops. They're paid. They pay others to have their opinion. The Sugar Lobby. Courtney Gain, the president of the Sugar Association, who sounds so much like the president of Sweetums from Parks and Recreation, it is uncanny, said the proposal ignores the many functional roles that sugar plays in food beyond sweetness. And she said, we need to study the effects of sugar substitutes on children a bit more. Ah, oh, God, yes, you tell them, Courtney. Yes, finally, someone said it. Thanks, Courtney, for giving them the facts. I appreciate that you're trying to make a lot more money for the shareholders out there at the expense of the children in the country that you live in, but... You're a patriot! Or a pay-treat. Pay-pay-treat. She wants you to pay for treats. 
Now, if you told this bit of news to someone from the UK or the Netherlands, you'd probably hear them go, oh, finally, good job, America, removing sugar from schools. Good job. Now, if you told someone from America, actually, it's the same. I found that most all things that I've seen online, whether that be replies to the original article, people quote retweeting it, I even delved into the comment section of news websites, a dark and vile place. But surprisingly, 99% of people that I saw talking about this were actually in favor of it. I, I felt so heartened, like, wow, we, we might actually have something good happen in America for once. That being said, I did find one tweet I wanted to point out just to show the type of people that are out there. So we've got Megan who says, I actually don't know how I feel about this. I think kids should be able to follow their hearts about what they need. Why can't you just install salad bars at school for once? Choices, yes, because we all know that children, when given the choice between a salad or a burger and fries, are going to choose the salad, right? Of course. And Evan was telling us about the lobbyists. Which in case you guys didn't know, most food industries, including the sugar industry, have lobbyists. And these lobbyists go to the government and change the laws of the FDA and the USDA to their favor. Because remember how we always hear there's no weight gain industry? Oh, the diet industry is the evil one. But it's the fast food corporations that are hiring people to go to Capitol Hill and lobby for rules. So that way they can make your children more addicted to food. like high sodium, these different dyes that are linked to hyperactivity. I know there's uh, there's red 40, red 20, blue lake 15, I think. Um, these are all things that my, I think I said it in the last video I was talking about. My mother wouldn't let me go anywhere near all those foods. We poo pooed them. And honestly, to this day, I still poo poo them. Any adult that eats Lunchables, I judge you. As a matter of fact, at my husband's job, so he works in a warehouse. Some guy got fired for stealing Lunchables. Yeah. $50,000 a year job. He got hungry on the job. Hope it was worth that dollar fifty three pile of shit, but pfft. and see, hearing about all this dietary issues, you know, and how again we keep hearing from the Boko movement that there's no way that there's a weight gain industry. They wouldn't do that. That's just you intuitively eating what you're addicted to. You know, just like again, how a crack addict intuitively gets his cocaine. How an alcoholic intuitively drinks till he's blackout drunk. How a smoker intuitively goes through two packs a day. Oh, not related though. No, no, no. Couldn't be. Nah. It's just me being soy. And then we find out that now they are changing the rules on the age for insurances to include bariatric surgery and weight loss drugs in kids. Dr. Diane Hess joins me now. She's the founder and medical director of Gramercy Pediatrics in New York City. Dr. Hess, how significant is this move to treating childhood obesity with both weight loss pills and surgery? Well, 
they have been around. Um, the, some of the medicines are more recently approved for the use of uh, ages 12 and up. Uh, surgery we've had, it's not new. It's, it's important because now we have guidelines. We have guidelines that we hope the insurance company will recognize and actually start paying for obesity care and not consider it something cosmetic. I think that's our biggest challenge. We need the pediatricians to be able to care for these kids. We need to be able to write prescriptions, but I can write the prescription. But if they don't get filled because they're not covered, my prescription is useless. And I can tell you, I've been doing obesity medicine for 20 years in pediatrics. I'm one of the few people, I was one of the first. I can tell you that one out of 10, maybe of my prescriptions get covered, one out of 10. What? What is going on? What? It, it, it's like a conspiracy theory. So there are adults that still don't believe in it. So they're trying to get to the kids. They don't want to teach kids proper diet and exercise. They would rather drug them up. So if the kids aren't addicted to sugar and foods, they'll get them addicted to drugs early on. People wake up. This is insane. This is insane. I, I couldn't believe when I'm listening to all this, I was just like, it's so weird. It's all happening at once. Lobbyists not wanting to change regulations on salt and sugar. One of the biggest providers of salt and sugar in our country gets an entire uh, contract with the same schools that the sugar and salt lobbyists don't want the rules to change in. And then on top of that, we're starting to say that kids can't possibly learn proper diet and exercise. Might as well drug them. You know, I'm not one to fashion a tinfoil hat. But I, I, I think I might have to start considering it. This is... This is dangerous, guys. This is crazy. You know, when I was in high school, my high school had four restaurants you could go to. Okay. So there was the American one. Okay. Which had like chicken nuggets, burgers, uh, depending on what day of the week it is and what time of the year. We'd have a variety of foods. Okay. Then it had the other side, which was the Italian one. That one had spaghetti and meatballs, rigatoni, penne. It had um, calzones and pizza. And then outside of that, we had a salad bar. And then on the other side of the lunchroom, there was the senior store. And what the, it was was a senior class would sell soda, candy, snacks things like that all four depending on the day would see business and I mean the kids wanted the the salad bar that was something the kids in my school aimed for I wonder if they still have one. Oh god it's offered by chartwells now really okay so this isn't in the same school but it is in the same area. And <clears throat> in my old area of schools, this is the next town over, breakfast features whole grain cereal, muffins, fresh fruit, and vegetables, 100% juice or low-fat milk. Lunch comes with an entree and choice of the three sides, including fresh fruits, vegetables, and milk. Or an extra bar. Oh, the extra, extra bar contains more fresh fruits and vegetables. 
That's nice. It's run by a company called Chartwells. I know of Chartwells. So at least in my old area, there's something. So I guess it does depend on where you're from. I'm wondering if these schools have to, oh my God, this is such a long list. I clicked on another one where it gives all of the different schools, guys. And oh God, I will say the fact that each and every meal that I've seen through the school systems has fruits and vegetables that are required per meal. Don't know what the entree is. Um, but it's just the fact that they aren't offering, at most schools apparently, their offerings are Lunchables, Pop-Tarts, Muffins, Sugary Cereals. Like, and then Evan's talking about the milk experiment, which I, most kids aren't like me. See, I love skim milk. You give me a little cup of just skim milk, I'm thrilled. Don't give me whole fat milk. I hate it. I worry though, guys. I worry. So my my hometown and city was reasonably well off. So that might be why where I'm originally from, not the case. Most towns aren't like my childhood. Start any parents I have in my audience. Start really monitoring. If you have to do a free school program, if your kids have to rely on the school to feed them more often than not, no judgment, but keep an eye on what they're giving your kid. Ugh. This stuff is just, it's not good. And it develops bad habits. It develops bad desires and cravings. Foods that kids don't need. Nutritionally lacking foods that they end up overeating to compensate because they're getting empty carbs and they're not filling their tummies right. That's not good. Oh, God, I'm just imagining a, ha a cafeteria of children simultaneously opening up a Lunchable and oh, the smell. The smell. It is not an attractive smell. You cannot drug a child out of a bad habit. You cannot operate on them and hope for the best. There are literal programs and companies and entities out there trying to get the children of our nation of America more addicted to sugar and salt and getting them obese earlier. It's, it's, it's so clear. Start educating your kids on a proper diet. Today I'm going to cover some of the rules that we use in my house for the kids because today we're going to cover what to teach your kids about so they can stay at a healthy weight. This is a, um, something near and dear to my heart. Kids shouldn't start off life with this uh, dogging them already. So. Having to deal with weight issues is something that really we shouldn't be uh, having our children deal with. So these are the rules uh, that I see as very effective, good rules. And rules can be broken once in a while, but and here, here's my board again, okay? So the first rule is no soda. And I know that sounds a little cliche, but no sugar sweetened beverages for the most part. You can have that, there be an exception for special occasions. Um, birthdays or if there's something like just on weekends or some minimal exceptions but for the most part no sugar sweetened beverages there's no nutrition in these why are we shouldn't be giving our kids tons of extra calories in uh, sugar sweetened beverages and if you drink only you know 120 ounce or uh, a day or some kids drink more than that you know, that's 25 pound weight gain in a year. That's tremendous. Even the little 100 calorie ones, that's 10 pounds of weight gain in a year. And that's for the little size ones. So this is a lot of calorie load for kids. So try to eliminate that and keep in mind that juice is just as bad. Juice 
has oftentimes the same calories as soda. Also very minimal, sometimes nutritional content in these juices. You know, um, fruit juice was put by nature or God or any whatever into fruit so that you would eat the fiber in the fruit. So we weren't meant to squeeze all the juice out of the fruit and just drink the juice. That's not how nature intended. So no soda, no juice, or if you're gonna have juice, cut it in half with water. And um, so drink water, milk, tea, those are good beverages. Um, sports drinks, eh, um, okay. But even if you're really going all out playing, you don't really need uh, sports drinks unless you've been playing for more than an hour. So. Get them tested for any allergens or foods that could cause inflammation in them because a lot of folks don't do that. It's called a scratch test and they also, and they take your child and they take like 40 to 60 little scratches and they test all the different foods. You might do the backwards research where you have to eliminate the elimination diet to find out what's wrong. There's poop tests you can get. Find out early. If your, if your child has dietary issues, they have digestive issues, if they're gaining weight and you can't figure out why, if they have depression for no reason, any of these things, check it out. Before you listen to these recommendations, whatever they might be, get your child tested, get their blood tested, and make sure your kid is okay. Go to professionals. Do not accept these subpar foods that are just not good for your kid. That's all I had to say about it, guys. Take care of your children, and I'll see you in the next one. This is my most recent video or the videos I've done in the past. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. And as always, remember to tell the people that are important to you that you love them and to be safe. So guys, I love you. Be safe. Have a great day.